Hey folks, Dr. Mike here, as usual for Renaissance Periodization. When to take breaks, this is building your first program video number four. Please watch the other three videos for any of this to make a ton of sense. But so far, we have gotten to a point where we're training really hard, successively, progressively, we're getting much bigger, much stronger, great results weeks and weeks later, and we start to get, as the French would say, a le tired. That is French, by the way. As many of you know, I have multiple degrees in French cuisine. I lived in France for a very long time. Shit, I'll up the lie. I was born in France. I'm French. But in any case, French things aside, how do we know it's time to take a break? How do we know our fatigue is too much? In fact, what the hell is fatigue anyway? Let's get into it. So first is the concept of accumulating fatigue. Every single hard training session that robustly grows muscle and improves strength also causes fatigue in much the same way that every delicious meal made in a kitchen causes a bit of a mess. At least the frying pan is dirty. You threw some, you know, um, eggshells into the garbage, maybe a few breadcrumbs got on the floor. If you were just to infinitely cook in a kitchen and make tasty meals, at some point, the mess, the fatigue, would get really high and start to interfere with your process of cooking. You can't make great eggs if the frying pan is dirty, because then the eggs just taste like diner eggs, which is to say whatever the hell was on the grill last time and the time before that. So with hard enough training, and not doing anything about the fatigue right there and then. So it's a fact that hard training comes with fatigue. It's also a fact that, yeah, a lot of the fatigue comes down between session and session. So if you train Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you the fatigue at the end of the workout on Monday is really high, and then it falls. And then you train Wednesday, and then it falls. And you train Friday, but it falls. But it doesn't go back all the way to baseline because training hard enough and frequently enough for your best possible gains means that on average, fatigue is going to rise slowly over and over the course of weeks and weeks of this progression. And then at some point, it's going to get to accumulate to a level that is too high to have the best possible productive training. We'll have to do something about it. Just like when a kitchen gets so dirty, you're like, ah, we just need to clean this kitchen because I can't do my job anymore. Same thing with fatigue, except in this case, Cumulative fatigue, when it gets high enough, has a couple of notable, sort of dependable bad things it causes. First, is it can disrupt technique. The more fatigued you are, the sloppier your technique is. We know that's bad news already, and it happens especially in beginners. Secondly, if you're in a high fatigue state, any one really good muscle and strength building workout builds less muscle and strength than usual than if you were in a lower fatigue state. Just like delicious meals in a shitty kitchen aren't as delicious anymore because you're like, is there asparagus in these eggs? You're like, no, but we grilled asparagus on the same grill right before we didn't wash, right? Same idea. And it creates an enhancement in injury risk. Injury risk is always really low with weight training. But as you get more and more fatigued, the injury risk starts to rise to some degree, and you don't want that to get too out of hand. In fact, this three-point process usually happens in that order. Once your fatigue gets pretty high, your technique starts to get usually pretty fuzzy. As the fatigue rises even further, then each session becomes quite a bit less productive. When fatigue is really high, your injury risk starts to really rise up. Now, do you ever want to get your fatigue so high that your injury risk really is notably elevated. No, because by then your technique sucks and which independently causes injury risk and you're just not building uh, as much muscle or building as much strength as you could be. So the ideal thing with fatigue is to catch it nice and early when it just starts to cusp up into the too much zone, just like a restaurant kitchen or a personal cooking kitchen. Like when the mess starts to get like to be a bit much then it's time to clean. You don't wait until you're slipping on banana peels in the middle of the kitchen. You probably hit it up a little bit earlier so that the meals you're cooking are the highest quality. Same thing with fatigue and training. You want to make sure you catch it not super early, but right when it starts to really interfere with the process, cut it off, do something to bring it down. We'll talk about what in a second and then move on and continue to make great progress after that. So, if fatigue is high enough to start degrading technique, especially in beginners, a few not ideal things tend to happen. First, your in injury risk goes up automatically because of poor technique by itself. That's best avoided if possible for obvious reasons. You're not in the gym to get hurt. 
Number two, the effectiveness of your workouts reduces because remember, good technique activates the muscles we want, doesn't fatigue the muscles we don't. And all of a sudden, you know, if you're putting in a ton of effort, but you're really fatigued, the amount of stuff you're getting out of the, um, the workout is not that great, especially if your fatigue is, uh, if your technique is off. But if you have great technique, you really stimulate the muscle you want, you get great results. Once your technique starts to break down, that's not ideal. And maybe worst of all, in the long term, if you practice with bad technique because of fatigue, you learn bad technique. Remember, you, for the human brain, practicing and learning is really the same thing. There's not a way in which the human brain, especially for a beginner task, can differentiate between trying something and then leaving it alone versus trying something and the brain being like, this is the right thing. So if you have crappy, crappy, crappy technique for weeks on end, then your body's like, this is how we do this exercise. And it learns to do it bad, which is terrible because then unlearning is actually a really hard process, not something we want to get into. So ideally, we want to start the fatigue reduction process in beginners, especially when their technique starts to get shaky via fatigue, right? Now, so for that, repeated bouts of poor technique are a really good sign that it's time to do something about fatigue. Now, why do we say repeated? Two sessions in a row is probably best because everyone has a session here and there where their technique just sucks. You know, shit happens. But if it's two sessions or more in a row, it's probably because your fatigue is excessive and not just because it's a one-off bad session. So that's a good sign that repeated technique failure or repeated technique degradation is a good sign. But sometimes you can be learning technique really quickly and thus your technique just gets better all the time, even though you're carrying a lot of fatigue. And for a variety of other reasons, we might want some more confirmation to make extra sure that we're not reducing fatigue sort of in a frightened manner way too early. So we have at least four things we can do, four signs that maybe our fatigue is starting to get a little bit high and it's time to bring it down. So first sign is your workouts feel very, very tough. And at the end of each session, you're exhausted. If that's the case and your technique is starting to break down, you can be sure your fatigue is probably pretty high. Second one is you're getting a bit intimidated by your workouts and your desire to train is down notably from usual. You're usually really pumped to go to the gym and you're like, man, I got this, I'm gonna crush this. And after a few weeks, maybe a, probably a few months, uh, sort of two to four months into the process, you're looking at this next workout and you're like, oh God, how the hell am I gonna get through that? And also like, ugh, training, ugh, I just wanna go relax and this is a, a bit much. That psychologically actually correlates very well to a high level of systemic fatigue. Third point is you're hitting PRs on your lifts but they're getting much harder to hit. You used to add 10 pounds every week and sometimes 10 pounds on a rep. Nowadays, months later, you're adding like five or two and a half pounds and you're grinding out just to set a small personal record. Again, beginners usually don't plateau in strength because they just keep going. But when stuff starts to get really hard and all these other things are true, you can be more and more sure that fatigue is high enough for us to have a beneficial approach to actually dealing with it. And of course, last but not least, your technique is starting to get a bit iffy and your lifting is a bit less coordinated and smooth than usual. You usually you squat up and down like a machine. You're like, I got this. I know where all my positions are. A few weeks later, you feel real comfortable. A few weeks after that or a few months after that, you're squatting. And you're like, oh, my hips even back. Like, is my chest up? Is it down? Who knows? I feel kind of weird. And maybe you look at a video of your lifts and you're like, ah, that looks like shit. It felt like shit. Maybe it's time to bring things down. Maybe fatigue is a bit too high. So when fatigue is excessively high, what we do for beginners is we execute a special kind of training week called a deload week. The only purpose of a deload week is twofold. One, to conserve the muscle and strength that you do have to make sure it doesn't go away because if we stop training, some of that goes away. And two, to greatly take fatigue and reduce it all the way back pretty much to baseline so that we can clear room for another productive, progressive process of strength and muscle gain. Super simple, right? In many beginners, this need for a deal in a week will first occur about two to four months after the beginning of their consistent hard training. And if this hasn't happened to you yet, if you're five months in and you're just not meeting any of the signs on the last slide and everything's golden, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Keep plugging along. Eventually everyone needs to deload. You don't have to go too soon. Definitely don't go too late. But if it just hasn't happened to you yet, no big deal. When it does happen, when the fatigue does check most of those boxes, then you can do a sort of three-step deload process. The first thing you do is when you detect the fatigue is excessive in that week of training that you're doing, finish that week strong, grind if you have to. So if like on a Wednesday of a Monday, Wednesday, Friday split, 
you notice you're like, dude, I am in the hole. I need a deload. Finish Friday. Finish that Wednesday workout. Nut up. Over up. Finish Friday. It might suck. Do your best. Finish that week. Then the next week, you take the first half of that week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll call that first half, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, second half. I know it's not evenly symmetrical, no big deal. The first half of the week, you do the same weights as you did in your last week. All right, your last hard training week, same weights on the bar, do the same warm-ups and everything, except cut all of your sets in half. And for each set you do actually do, compare the reps you got last week and do half of them. So if you did uh, 10 reps at 135 pounds last week, for let's say an average of four sets of roughly 10 reps. This time you do only two sets, not four, and you still do 135 pounds, but you do sets of five and not 10, right? And if you got sets of eight, you'll do sets of four. And you say, but that's not sets of five to 10. That's true, but they're not designed to be stimulative. They're designed to deload you and to reduce fatigue. Real simple formula. That's for the first half of the week. So in a Monday, Wednesday, Friday split, that would be the Monday and Wednesday workout. You would do just like that. Half the sets, half the reps, same weight. Easy. For the second half of the week, which in the Monday, Wednesday, Friday would only be Friday workout, you just don't show up to the gym. Take time off, relax, eat, sleep, rest, and then your fatigue will fall like crazy. And then the next week, you'll be able to come back and hit it hard again, all right? Some of you, either looking at this intellectually for the first time or having experienced it yourself, will be like, dude, this is so easy. That's the point. It's supposed to be easy. Imagine you have a super, super tough Monday through Friday job where you need to be on point intellectually, make fast decisions, so on and so forth. It's a great job. You love it. You're really good at it, but it's tough. Should your weekends be full of hardship or should they be super easy to bring down fatigue? I mean, can you imagine someone's like, hey man, let's go to three parties and go skiing this weekend. And you're like, I have another hard week of work next week. Fuck that. I'm going to go and I'm going to turn on Netflix. I'm going to light up like eight joints in a row, smoke them shits harmonica style, eat all the food in the world, sleep for 19 hours. And then when I come back to work on Monday, I'm going to be like fucking Superman because the whole point of the weekend is to relax. Same with a deal week. It's like a weekend drawn out. So yeah, you do a little bit of training, but it's much easier. And then the rest of the time you take off, you're supposed to come back super fresh, which means towards the end of the deal week, you might feel like a bit of a psycho. You're like, oh God, I need lifting weights or I'm going to commit a crime. Good. I mean, don't commit a crime. Wait until the week after when you can commit a crime against these weights. It's supposed to be easy. It's part of the process. Here are a few things for you to look at in your own spare time. So you can feel free to pause during the various parts of this presentation where these are up on the screen. We have a, a sample week eight. Okay. This was the week in which stuff got really, really hard. It's sort of last week of accumulation of progression. And then sometime during this week, we're like, that's it, deload next week. And then this next slide is what that deload week would look like. Week nine, that's the deload week. Notice Monday and Wednesday, everything's filled out. It's predictably half the sets, half the reps, right? And Friday is no training because that's exactly what we said is a good idea to do. Right? So quick summary, train hard over the weeks. When you clearly start to get run down and you can't get the best quality training anymore, take a deload week. And by the way, if you just want to take a week off of the gym, that's totally fine too. Especially for beginners, you're not really missing out on anything. Just don't lose the gym's address and come back next time. Okay. So if you just want to go off on vacation, that's totally fine too. But if you do want to stay dedicated to the plan and you want to do your best, 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 a deload week is a little bit better than a week off. If you're wondering... Okay, I feel like I sort of need to deload, but I'm not sure. You should take a deload. Err on the more frequent side of deloading. It keeps fatigue lower. It keeps your results better. And there's more than a few reasons and a few good studies in the sports science literature to show us that if we deload a little bit more frequently, we essentially lose nothing. Because when you deload, you resensitize your body to growth and to strength enhancement so much that it just makes better gains when you come back. So even if you deload like once every five weeks, your long-term results are stellar. If you're like, nah, fuck that, I'm hardcore, and you only deal it every eight weeks, your results will be almost identical, except you're taking fewer breaks that way. So you essentially put in a week here and there. Every other month, you put in an extra week of work, and you get nothing out of it. So erring on the side of more deloading, unless you're deloading every other week or some shit like that, is better than erring on the side of less. There's no bonus points given to Mr. Tough Guy, right? You don't have to hold yourself to some crazy robot standard. If you feel like you need a deload, you're pretty convinced 
just fucking take one. It's not going to cost you any long-term gains, any long-term gains. I can't make that any more clear. Next time, for our last video in the series, we're going to come back and figure out how to restart your next, what's called mesocycle of training. Because you finished this whole cycle, right? You went, you started week one, you went all the way up through, in this example, eight weeks of hard training, got too fatigued, time to deload, week nine was deload, and then what do you do? We'll talk about what and then is in the next video.